This is the second lesson video in Unit 1 for AP Statistics. And in this video we'll be talking about types of distribution as well as how to describe a graphical display. Our first type of distribution is a symmetrical distribution which refers to data which is more or less, meaning it's approximately um, symmetrical, meaning if I were to fold it in half, then it would match up on the sides. Uh, specifically, one that we'll talk a lot about in this course is a bell-shaped distribution, which looks like the one we made in class um, a couple of days ago when we did the hiring discrimination activity with the dot plot. And so it just tends to look like this, where there's one mound, and where the majority of the data is around the center. And so you can tell if I were to fold this graph in half, it would match up fairly well. Now it doesn't just have to look like a bell shape, it can have other shapes as well, one of which might be a rectangle, rectangular distribution. Or it could have two mounds, and I'll draw a couple of those for you now. So up at the top there, you'll see I have the rectangular distribution. Again, if I cut it in half, it would be matching up, as well as one that has two mounds uh, would also be symmetrical. The second type of distribution is one that is uniform. And that's where you have data in which everything occurs at pretty much the same amount of times. So frequency just refers to the number of occurrences. A class is just the um, range of values that that occurrence could fall under. So if you're thinking about back to our hiring discrimination activity with the dot plot, instead of having a bell-shaped dot plot, we could have had one that looks a whole lot like the one that I've drawn up here. Now it's not perfectly uniform, but it is approximately um, uniform in which each likely number has about the same amount of occurrences. And we usually see a uniform distribution when probabilities are approximately equal. The third type is when you have data that is skewed and it can be skewed in a left direction or right direction and left is sometimes referred to as negative skewness. A right skewness is referred to sometimes as a positive skewness so you need to know both um, ways to describe it and that's when you have data in which one side called the tail is longer than the other side and the direction of skewness is on the side of the longer tail and so now um, I want to draw a picture on the next slide to help you remember which one's left skewness and which one's right skewness Okay, here, so here's how you can remember right skewness. It kind of takes on the shape of the top of uh, part of your right foot. And the majority of the data is here in this area with some over here in this tail area. In the same fashion, this would represent the left skewness, much like your left foot looks, takes on this shape. And something, some kind of data that might be leftly uh, skewed is maybe if we're talking about um, the number of teenage drivers. So we would not have a whole lot of data down here, okay, when teenage drivers start. We might have a couple 13-year-olds that tend to drive a car. Most of our data would occur over here as teenagers were older, 16, 17, 18 years old. The last type of distribution is a bimodal or multimodal distribution. And so those are going to be distributions that have more than one mound. So bimodal, bimodal distributions would have two mounds. Multimodal would be three or more. So we've already seen a unimodal, um, which was the bell shape. Bimodal would look something like this. A multimodal might look like this. Now the mounds don't be, have to be exactly the same height, but you do see definite um, differences um, in the distribution. 
An example of something that might um, produce a bimodal distribution is when we're taking measurements of maybe height or weight for um, two different genders and not separating the genders. So for generally for females, you might have a mound that is on the lower end of weight and males you might have one that's on the higher end of weight. Now we're going to move on to talking about how to describe a graph. Um, we're going to use the same technique to describe all types of, of graphs, these in particular. We've already seen a dot plot in class. We'll be talking more about these in the days to come. Uh, but on the AP exam, it's very important that you describe graphs the way we're about to learn right now. And so, uh, very important that we do a thorough job of that. Okay, the first thing uh, we can talk about is the center of the graph. Center of the graph. And the first letter of this word and the words we're going to talk about is going to be important. Um, and that just means describe where the middle of the data falls. And we can do that in three basic ways. Um, we can either do it by the, the mean, which is the average. We can do it by the median, which is the middle number. Or we can do it by the mode, the number that occurs most often. Now the way we choose is going to depend on the shape of our graph and we'll get more into that um, later. And there can be more than one uh, mode, but majority of the time we're going to use the mean or the median to describe the center and that's going to depend on whether or not it's symmetrical or maybe it's skewed. And so we'll be talking about that in the days to come. Alright, secondly, uh, we need to describe anything that occurs that is unusual. Okay, so an unusual occurrence might be an outlier. An outlier is just some kind of uh, data value that's either very much to the left or very much to the right of your data, away from all of your points. Um, and the, Or you might have gaps in your data, or maybe there's clusters of data um, around. Anything that you see that might be um, considered unusual. Thirdly, we have to consider the spread of the data. And that's just discussing how far apart the data seems to be. And that generally refers to the idea of variability, which is a big idea in statistics. And we can describe how our data is spread by the range which remember range is this the high value minus the low value in our data or we can do it by this idea of standard deviation which we will speak a lot of in this course and standard deviation is just how far the data is on average from the center or the mean okay how far the data is on average from the center or the mean or thirdly we might describe it using the IQR which really deals with box plots mostly and that stands for the interquartile range and when we talk more about box plots we'll talk more about that and it represents the middle 50 percent of the data and lastly we have to consider the shape when talking about and describing a describing graphs. And remember we just talked about types of distribution. That's really what types of distribution describe. It's your shape. And so that's the overall shape of your distribution. Is it symmetrical? Is it uniform? Is it skewed? Is it bimodal? So those are all terms we can use to describe it. And sometimes it will be more than one of these terms. So you might have a distribution that is both symmetrical and bimodal, or uniform and symmetrical. So those can overlap and you can describe it more than one way. So generally, Ms. Pennington dislikes this very, 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 very much. But we'll allow it in this one case because we need to remember how to describe a graph. And so when describing your graph, we must describe the center, 
we must describe anything that's unusual. We must describe the shape and the spread. All four of these things must be described when you are asked to describe a graph. So not only must you use those four things to describe the graph, but it must be done within the context of the problem, which I talked to you a little bit about when we talked first about the AP exam. And so the specifics of the problem, and if you use statistical vocabulary, it must be done correctly. And you need to use complete sentences. So as I was describing the AP exam to you earlier, this is what's very important. It's not enough just to know and to write down an answer. It must be done appropriately. And that concludes our lesson for this video.